G'day and welcome to another episode of Mr. Code's Steam Podcast, where we talk about science and technology after school. Today, we are introducing the first tutorial in using the LEGO Spike Prime with the Raspberry Pi build hat. One of the most exciting celebrity marriages happened in 2021, and that is of course between my superstars, the Lego Spike Prime and the Raspberry Pi. And that was all made official using this, the new Raspberry Pi build hat. The sponsor of today's video is More Educational, who has kindly provided us with a Lego Spike Prime kit. More about them later in the video. Now, if you're new to my channel, then you might be wondering, what is LEGO Robotics? Well, I've made a whole bunch of videos talking about the latest LEGO Spike Prime and LEGO Mindstorm systems. And of course, I've done hundreds of tutorials uh, for them, so definitely check them out. But if you're a LEGO Robotics user like me, then you're probably wondering, why LEGO and Raspberry Pi have tied the knot? Well, in short, Raspberry Pi is a home automation and robotics powerhouse. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a fully fledged computer system that can handle all sorts of programs like machine learning, uh, image recognition, web connectivity, Bluetooth and multimedia, while at the same time it can be expanded to uh, cater for touch screens, sensors, motors and all sorts of other modules. And by partnering all of this capability with LEGO, uh, this is going to raise the game of LEGO Robotics and it's going to give rise to even more exciting LEGO Robotics projects. However, the build hat has some great benefits for Raspberry Pi users as well. LEGO Robotics is one of the most popular hardware systems in the world and the build hat gives Pi users access to familiar LEGO parts which are hassle-free to install and put together and they are really easy to work with unlike a lot of the modules that Raspberry Pi users are used to. Now today we are going to run our first program with the Raspberry Pi build hat and these are the materials you'll need. So here of course we need a Raspberry Pi. I have the Raspberry Pi 4B here. You'll need a build hat and you'll need the Lego Spike Prime kit. I'm just using the Lego Spike Prime uh, large motor. Uh, you can also use the medium motor from the uh, Lego Mindstorms robot inventor, or you can use the small motor from the Lego Spike Essential kit. I'm also adding a Lego wheel and uh, an axle and a uh, tooth connector over here. Uh, you'll need a screwdriver and uh, these are the nuts and bolts that come with the build hat and you'll need the uh, micro SD card and an SD card adapter. Of course you'll also need uh, all the cables for HDMI and uh, power source for your Raspberry Pi as well. Now Raspberry Pi projects are coded using Python so if you're unfamiliar with Python then you can check out my Python for Lego Spike Prime playlist over here. Now I spend a lot of time making video tutorials just like these, so if they help you out in any way, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that allows me to make more coding videos, so I thank you in advance. Let's jump in. The first thing we're going to do is set up our Raspberry Pi image on our micro SD card. It is super simple. All you have to do is download the Raspberry Pi imaging software. I'll leave the link in the description and then you run the software. This is what it looks like. So here is the Raspberry Pi imager. You get your micro SD card and you put it into your uh, SD card adapter and then put it into your computer. So once you have your SD card uh, loaded onto your computer, what we want to do is choose our operating system. Whoops, don't need that yet. Choose your operating system uh, and you choose the recommended Raspberry Pi OS. Here it says this is the uh, Raspberry Pi Debian Bullseye image. Click on that. And then you choose your storage device. This is really important. You have to choose the SD card that you've put in, okay? Make sure you don't choose uh, your external hard drive or any other drive that you don't want completely erased because uh, it is very easy to pick the wrong one. Make sure you choose 
the micro SD card that you have put in there. So choose that. And then here is a special trick. Uh, you go Control Shift X to set up your uh, advanced settings. So what I like to do is I like to disable overscan. Uh, we'll talk about what this does later on, but basically it removes the black border around your Raspberry Pi desktop. Uh, then you set your uh, host name. I'm going to set it to Spike Pi because this is going to be my first Raspberry Pi uh, for Spike. Uh, you can enable SSH and uh, the password for my Pi user is uh, set at the default at the moment, but uh, you should be changing this. Change this to a Raspberry Pi uh, password that you will uh, remember later on. So make sure you write down your password. You set up your uh, Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi's uh, connection details. So this is my SSID and my password for my uh, local Wi-Fi. Set up your Wi-Fi country and your locale settings. So I'm in Australia and uh, I'm using the US keyboard layout. Uh, and that's it. Those are the key details. And this just saves you an extra step later on. So you don't need to uh, connect your Raspberry Pi to the Wi-Fi separately. Okay, so click on save and then press on write. All existing data will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And then we wait for the image to be installed. During this time, it might ask you to format your uh, disk or it might say that the disk has been ejected. You just press uh, cancel or close uh, out of that. You don't want to format your disk again because if you format your disk uh, after you have written your image, then uh, you're going to have to reinstall the image. So keep that in mind. Now, while we're waiting for the image to install, we can uh, start building our Raspberry Pi setup, okay? So this is your Raspberry Pi, and uh, in a moment when the image is finished and ejected, then we will put the SD card into the back here. So at the back uh, is a spot for your micro SD card. What we're going to do now is put on the screws that come as part of your build hat. And what I like to do is put the screw in, make sure you have it the right way up, okay? So there's a little bit of text here that says this way up, so uh, make sure that is showing. Uh, you put your screw in and then you hold it in place, then you can uh, just screw in this uh, big um, spacer over here, okay? You don't even need your uh, screwdriver just yet. Uh, you don't have to do it too tightly as well. So let's just screw in our spaces. So that's two. Here's our third one. And then our fourth one. Okay, so all this is ready. And now we're going to connect the build hat to our Raspberry Pi. Make sure you have lined up uh, the build hat with the uh, 40 GPIO pins uh, exactly right down the bottom. Uh, it's really hard to get wrong, but uh, you never know, sometimes you might uh, miss a couple of pins. Okay, all right. So it all fits in nicely. Now from the other side, we're going to put in the other screws. And this time you're going to need your screwdriver. So here. So one screw. Oops.
All right, all done. So all the screws are installed onto our build hat and uh, our build hat is nice and secure. Uh, what we're going to do next is uh, put on our motor. So here, we're going to put on the axle to our motor, put the wheel on the axle, and then uh, let's line up the uh, zero position uh, on the, whoops, I'll just show you again. So here, uh, there's a little mark on the motor, make sure it's lined up to the zero. Uh, and then we'll put a little uh, tooth here, just so that we see where the zero position is. And then we'll put the motor into port A. The cool thing about this setup is that we don't need the uh, Spike Prime hub anymore. So this uh, Raspberry Pi has now pretty much taken over the role of the LEGO Mindstorms hub or the Spike Prime hub. Okay. Now it's time to install the cables. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, connect everything except for the power cable. Uh, so here I'm going to install my keyboard. and then my mouse and finally the HDMI cable. HDMI cable uh, is a micro HDMI. Just plug it into one of the HDMI slots down the bottom and then we, uh, we just wait until our image has been completed. Right on cue, the image has just been downloaded, installed and verified. So you can now click on continue. Now all we have to do is eject our SD card and put it into our Raspberry Pi. So here, going to put in our micro SD card. Just like that. And now we connect the power. Connect the power to USB-C. After you've connected your Raspberry Pi to a monitor with the HDMI cable and you turn it on, give it a few minutes to boot up. It's going to load up your Raspberry Pi desktop. But after a few minutes, uh, if it's showing a black screen, then you're going to have to follow these next steps. These following steps are only for if you are seeing a black screen with no, uh, no graphics, no blinking uh, cursor or anything like that on your monitor, okay? So if you are seeing a black screen, you need to take your micro SD card out and then put it back into your computer and follow these steps. And on the SD card, you should find this config text file. Uh, you edit the text file with Notepad++ if you're on Windows. Don't use the normal win Notepad because uh, sometimes it adds some formatting. So you go here, Notepad++, and then you change this comment. So where it says HDMI safe equals one, you uncomment it by removing the hash symbol and then you press save. Right? Once it is saved, you can now eject it again, and that should uh, solve your black screen problem on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do on the Raspberry Pi is to click on this Raspberry Pi menu up the top, go to Preferences, and then go to your Configuration Settings. Here you click on Interfaces, and then make sure you turn serial port enabled and then serial console disabled. The so serial port enabled and serial console disabled. Okay. Press the OK and then reboot your Raspberry Pi. So once your Raspberry Pi has rebooted, it's time to install the build hat library. So we go up to the top here for the command line and then you type in the following sudo pip3 install build hat enter and then you're going to see oops what did I do sudo pip3 install build hat there we are 
So uh, just wait for it to install and it should uh, come up with the installation complete message. All right, there we go. All right, so this is uh, super simple. All we have to do now is load up a program called Thony. And Thony is one of the default programming uh, IDEs for Raspberry Pi. Okay, here is Thony. So inside Thony, let's write our first program. From build hat import motor. And then we're going to define our motor. So I've attached the uh, motor for spike prime onto port A of the build hat. So here we go motor equals motor open bracket A in quotation marks, close bracket. So we want our motor to constantly report what its absolute position is. So the code here is while true colon print open bracket motor dot get underscore a position open close brackets and then close the main brackets now before we run the code i want to talk about the sponsor of today's video more educational ever since creator academy started making lego education videos we have been greatly supported by the experts at more educational they are an authorized partner of lego education with over 20 years experience working with lego education products so if you're in australia and you want to buy genuine lego education products like the ones shown in this video then make sure you check out the more educational website all right it is time to run our first program so we click on run and then it's going to prompt you to save your program into the file system so here let's uh, choose a nice place to uh, store our file gonna put it into desktop create a uh, projects folder And then here I will call it Pi Hat One. Okay, now we click on Run. Now it is running. So now, as you can see, uh, as I turn the wheel, we are now reading all the absolute position of the motor at all times. We can also change this code up a little bit. We can stop the code and then just remove the A from uh, A position. And then that will just record its relative position. Uh, and it will go all the way beyond 360 degrees. So here we press run again. And then here now, it's going all the way up. And if I spin it the other way, goes all the way down. Congratulations, you have just run your very first Raspberry Pi build hat code. And I can't wait to do more complex projects in this video series. But I just found out that the, uh, the normal uh, Raspberry Pi uh, power supply isn't actually strong enough to power all the Lego motors on the build hat. So I am now waiting for an 8 volt uh, 6 amp power supply to arrive in the mail and once it does I will do more videos uh, using this hardware. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye